Hello, bonjour, Alberta. Did you know that at least 238,000 people speak Francais in Alberta? And those numbers just keep on growing? Oui, oui, c'est vrai, it's true. And thanks to Shaw TV Community Access Programming, we get to reach out to everyone to let you know all about special people, places, events, and activities happening right here in this great province in both English and en français. That's right, mes amis. We begin the first part of our program in English, and then we repeat it en français. So stay with us. Restez à l'écoute. Bienvenue and welcome to Hello Bonjour Alberta. I'm Marc Lalonde. I'm sure many of you had a dream career when you were very little, and that was to work with dinosaurs. Well, have I got a treat for you in this episode, because our guest today is François Terrien of the Royal Terrell Museum in Drumheller. Welcome, François. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me. Great to have you there. That's uh, quite the, uh, the banner behind you there. We'll talk about that in, in just a moment. But let's start off by getting to know you a little bit better. Okay. Where are you originally from, and, and, and how did you grow up to, to have this career we've always wanted? Well, I'm originally from Quebec. I was born in Montreal, but grew up in a small town called saint julie in the south shore of Montreal. And as you uh, probably know, out in eastern Canada, we don't have dinosaurs. We don't have the luxury that we have here in Alberta. Well, you do have some dinosaurs, but yeah, they're more in Ottawa. Yeah, a different kind. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. <laughs> so, no, so my passion for dinosaurs came at a very young age when I was probably four years old. I received my first dinosaur book, and I was hooked. And I said, one day I want to be a petty and and study dinosaurs and I'm one of those kids that actually never grew out of that phase and then uh, yeah, so, many, so many decades later, later I'm a paleontologist. So a as a kid did you do a lot of things with dinosaurs? Did you win prizes for stuff? Well, I was really big into science uh, as well. It wasn't only uh, dinosaurs, it was also the natural history, science. So we didn't have a museum per se in Montreal, but I went to Ottawa where there was a big museum where they have uh, dinosaurs on display. But otherwise, it was mainly from books because it was before Jurassic Park. It was yeah, decades before Jurassic Park. So, so yeah, so most of my interest was basically just, just flourished in response to yeah, reading books about dinosaurs. So where do you go to study to get a doctorate in, in paleontology in Canada? Yeah, well, although dinosaurs are mainly a focus of Alberta and even Saskatchewan to some extent, it's possible to study dinosaurs pretty much anywhere in the world. Any big university usually has a paleontologist on staff, may not specialize in dinosaurs, but can actually open doors to, uh, to study dinosaurs. So uh, for my undergraduate studies, I went to the University of Montreal, studied geology, so the study of rocks. And then uh, to become a paleontologist, you have to pursue studies past a uh, graduate degree. You have to get a master's and a doctorate. So for that, I opted to go to the United States. I went to Rhode Island on the East Coast to study dinosaurs of Arizona and New Mexico, some of the earliest dinosaurs known. And then for my PhD, I went to Baltimore to the Johns Hopkins uh, University School of Medicine. And for that, I moved uh, to Romania. I spent three summers in Romania doing field work there, studying the dinosaurs over there. Wow, so it's, it's a pretty involved uh, process to get there. Yeah, absolutely. It requires yeah, the mm -hmm. willingness to travel and uh, yeah, willing to, to go where there's uh, yeah, professors and departments that are willing to, to take you on to, to become a, a paleontologist, but it's definitely worth the, the effort. So you're now at the Royal Terrell, uh, so how did you get there? Well, after finishing up my PhD, I was looking for a new turf, a new place to go to make contacts and maybe establish a, uh, working collaborations with some researchers and establish, a, carve out a little piece of, the, of Canada where I could do my research without stepping on anyone's toes. So, of course, the Royal Tyrol Museum is the best place in Canada to study dinosaurs, especially with Alberta being so, so rich in terms of fossils. So I came here, uh, tried to make a few contacts, but at the time they had all their uh, their their staff uh, there. There were no positions available, so I just said, "Well, I'll make a few contacts, make a few friends, carve out a little niche where I can do research, and then end up 
teaching somewhere at a university in North America and then come back. But after a year, they offered me a position. I said, yes, thank you, I'll take it. All right, all right. So that's that. That's what makes you now an Albertan. And how long yeah, is that? Yeah, exactly. Been? Oh my goodness, it's been eleven years. Eleven now. years. Yeah. Okay. Well, that might seem like a long time. Yeah. <laughs> I guess yeah, so. but compared to I others, so. yeah, it's yes. basically the blink of an eye. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, um, let's get into it. Let's start with the the Royal Le Tyrol. Um, um, it, that that's a museum that has been in existence since when? Uh, we're celebrating the 30th anniversary of the museum. It was actually on September 25th, 1985, that the museum first opened its doors. <coughs> but it was yeah, many years in the making. I think the plans uh, came about in the late 1970s, when mm -hmm. at the time there was no big museum dedicated to paleontology in Alberta. And uh, the, the researcher at the time, Dr. Phil Curry, said, well, that's a shame. We should definitely have an Alberta institution that's dedicated to the study of dinosaurs. So that's how basically it all snowballed uh, into a big project. And then yeah, in 1985, the museum opened its doors and it's been there ever since. And it's the largest in Canada. It's uh, the right largest museum dedicated to paleontology mm -hmm. in the world. And it's definitely uh, one of uh, really? the best institutions. There's many institutions in Canada that study paleontology and dinosaurs, but by far, yeah, the Royal Tyrrell Museum is the best one. Let's talk about, uh, about this uh, this particular friend of yours yes, here indeed. Who's, uh, who's threatening to eat your yeah. shoulder here. That is very realistic looking from where I'm sitting. Uh, who's the artist that, that, that That's that an illustration of Albertosaurus, a dinosaur that was named after the province of Alberta. And the, the artist that did that illustration is uh, Julius Chotoni. He's a, a Canadian artist originally from uh, Manitoba, and he's a really great uh, illustrator. As you can see, yeah, he's doing amazing work in terms of yeah, getting the actual very lifelike postures. He's, uh, I've collaborated with him on many projects, some for the museum, but also some for the Royal Canadian Mint when we're doing illustrations that end up on coins. So he's one of the best out there nowadays in terms of doing lifelike uh, reconstructions of dinosaurs. So, so how close are we getting to to really what they look like? Like for instance out of this, how, how much of this is 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 speculation still and how much do we really know? Well all of the the, the position and uh, let's just say that yeah there's as much science into that illustration as there can be. Basically, everything is based on some fossil scientific evidence. There's some uh, aspects of the illustrations that are <coughs> based on mm -hmm. artistic license. For example, the colors. We don't really know what colors dinosaurs were. We suspect that they would have been very colorful because modern uh, reptiles, even though most th people think that lizards are green, but they're ex actually extremely colorful. And birds are also a type of dinosaurs, and we know that birds are extremely colorful. So yeah, when it comes down to the coloration of the animals, that's a lot of artistic license with a little bit of guidance from a scientist saying, well, if it's a predator, you don't want it mm. to be basically super bright, because then otherwise it will scare away prey. Yeah. But otherwise, yeah, it's based on uh, science. There's some facts uh, or some features that we're not too sure about. For example, the presence of feathers in these animals now that we have fossil evidence that suggests that the Tyrannosaurus or Albertosaurus here may have potentially had feathers just like birds, but we don't have very direct evidence. It's very limited. But based on other fossils from China, for example, we know that most meat-eating dinosaurs were covered for, with feathers. feathers. Oh, so okay. that's why here we took a little bit of artistic license, but not too much, just something just that was reasonable to say that, yeah, okay, maybe in places uh, these sure. animals uh, sported some feathers. So if evidence does come out, you can say, well, we already knew exactly, that. Yeah. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> <Okay>. yeah. <laughs> All right, I see you brought some things for us to, to look at here. Uh, these are, are these the real thing? Uh, those are replicas, but they are based <laughs> on real fossils. So since we were talking about uh, Albertosaurus and T-Rex, here I decided to bring uh, a cast or a replica of a T-Rex tooth. So it just goes to show you how big these teeth were. Some of the teeth of T-Rex were up to 15 centimeters long, and then you can see this part here, the black part, that's the part that was above the gum line. Everything else is it's the below. root that was actually anchored in the jaw. So these animals had teeth that were solidly anchored because they had to bite down on prey. And how many of those did they have? Oh, there were probably close to 60 in the jaws. And these guys constantly shed 
shed their teeth and new ones grew just like sharks do today. So that's why yeah, we say, well, at any one time probably had around 60 teeth, but mm -hmm. throughout its entire lifespan, this animal probably had hundreds of teeth. So it's quite different from you and I, where sure. we only have two sets of teeth and then you lose them and, well, too bad. These guys, <laughs> yeah, constantly replace their teeth. I guess yeah. they would have broken them on bones and things. Exactly, yeah, so that's right, why right. it's a good thing to do. And this looks like... This other one here is the skull of an ostrich mimic dinosaur called an ornithomimid. And this <laughs> specimen is actually from uh, the Drumheller Valley. So uh, it's, an, it's an Albertan, it's an Albertan dinosaur. And what's really cool is that we found some of these guys here in Alberta that were the first feathered dinosaurs ever discovered in North America. So uh, we have a beautiful illustration again by Julius that shows what, these, what we think these animals look like. Totally, looked a lot like ostriches, but with a very long tail. And we know that these animals also had wings even though they were uh, flightless they were incapable of flying so it's telling us that f uh, fe uh, feathers and mainly wings first evolved for courtship and display and only later in birds were uh, wings actually adopted for flight so it's telling okay. us right. something about the evolution of feathers and, uh, and wings in dinosaurs in the, the ancestors of birds if you want. Okay, you mentioned Jurassic Park, and I think I, I think I know that this is a, a favorite subject of yours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, you know, there are a few things about dinosaurs that were uh, revealed to the world, and a lot of us have our education about dinosaurs from Jurassic Park. Are, was it that entirely accurate, or might there be some exceptions? Yeah. Well, the interesting thing mm -hmm. is we have to remember that Jurassic Park was made in 1993, so that's what. 20 years three, ago. 30, uh, three, uh, 30 years ago. So, uh, so it's, uh, a lot of things uh, have changed s since then. At the time, uh, yeah, there was, uh, it was cutting edge technology and paleontology. A lot of what was presented there was at least in the field or in the realm of the possible in mm -hmm. terms of based on the paleontological knowledge we had at the time. But in the intervening uh, 20 years since uh, Jurassic Park came out, we've made many new discoveries that have disproved a lot of the quote unquote facts. So that what, what for example, w would not be accurate? Uh, uh, probably yeah, the, the most mm. obvious one would be a T-Rex, for example. You remember the scene where the little girl is screaming and then the paleontologist says, don't move. If you move, uh, T-Rex can see you. If you don't move, T-Rex won't see you. Well, it turned out that now we know that T-Rex had forward-facing eyes that were really good at depth perception. In fact, its vision would have been very similar to that of an eagle that has the uh, forward-facing eyes and really capable of uh, seeing things in 3D. So this means that T-Rex could have seen you even if you didn't move. So if ever you come face-to-face -face with a T-Rex, take your chances and run, because if you stand <laughs> still, it's going to eat you. <laughs> Ooh, that's that sounds pretty scary. Uh, I guess if you stay small, maybe he won't bother because you're not enough. Yeah, exactly. A T-Rex was a very big animal. Mm. We're talking about up to 12 meters long, up to nine tons in weight. So yeah, if you're a tiny little thing, yeah, it's barely yeah, a snack for it. So it probably wouldn't bother okay. you. Oh, that, that, but that part's encouraging. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, dinosaurs, very common dinosaur uh, uh, fossils in Alberta. Yes, where, absolutely. Where else in the world uh, w did dinosaurs live? Yeah. Well, Alberta is by far uh, one of the best places in the world. I'd say probably in the top five best places in the world to find dinosaur fossils. But the truth is that dinosaurs lived everywhere on every single continent. We find dinosaur fossils in Antarctica. We find them in the high Canadian Arctic. So they were uh, worldwide in their distribution. The only factor that dictates whether you can find fossils of dinosaurs or not is whether you have rocks of the right age and that's where Alberta is one of the best places because the rocks are of the perfect age to preserve dinosaur fossils. All right, all right. Well, thank you very much, Francois Terrien, paleontologist at the Royal Tyrell. Um, stay with us, everyone. On continue en français.